Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Carl Griffith from Graybar, and we're glad to have you online today for our uh, G2 Talk data, SAR data Center webinar uh, discussion today. Um, we do this every month on the third, third Tuesday of the month, and uh, we're just glad to have you all online with us today. Uh, before we get going, I thought I'd spend a little bit of time and uh, in just a moment to talk to you about Graybar. Our mission statement's online here. At Graybar helps our customers power, network, and secure their facilities with speed, intelligence, and efficiency. Well, today the facility is a data center, and the intelligence piece we're going to talk about today, and most importantly, the efficiency piece we're going to talk about today is about DCIM. Uh, before we get going, I wanted to give you a couple reminders. Number one is everything that happens on Graybar G G2 Talk webinars are archived on graybar.com. So if you go to graybar.com, and look for the G2 Talk uh, logo. You can click on it, and there normally is a link there. There should be a link there to get you to the archive. Or you can go to our events page, and you can get the archive there. So all the information you're going to get today and from pre previous uh, webinars are all, is all available to you. If you're one of the first 50 people to be online with us today uh, for this uh, webinar, you're going to get an email from us uh, and uh, get a, a certificate for a cup of coffee. So look for your email. Uh, look in your email for that, and you can exchange whatever happens on your email uh, for a cup of coffee from a large national coffee chain in the uh, in the United States. Our uh, our presenter today is from uh, Raritan, and his name is Mike Gonski. Uh, I've known Mike for a couple years now, and he's the director of software sales for Raritan. And um, uh, Mike has been part of the IT industry for quite some time. He's a subject matter expert when it comes to power delivery systems inside the data center, and particularly DCIM. So we're just uh, very thankful uh, to have Mike with us. Again, Mike is with uh, Raritan, and uh, they're a, a, you might know about Raritan when it comes to uh, KVM-type products, but clearly uh, Raritan is in the DCIM space. We're going to talk about DCIM today. And uh, we encourage you to participate with us uh, with questions. Uh, there's a little red icon on the bottom of your screen. You can click on it, open a chat box. You can type your question in, and we'll go over those questions at the end of the webinar. So without holding things up any further, I'm going to pass the baton over to Mike. Welcome, Mike. Okay, thanks a lot, Carl, and uh, thanks to all the people from Graybar uh, and, uh, and allowing us to share this time with you today. Um, you know, start off with our agenda from a high level. We're going to talk about DSIM systems. Um, then we're also going to get into savings, specific savings. We're, we're trying to document savings that you can get from these systems. A lot of people are asking us, you know, how, how can I save money by deploying these DSIM systems? Uh, you know, where's my return? How can I get this through management? So the first area we're going to look at is savings from increasing your set point. And, and this might be done with tools that you already have in place and then just by simply adding a, 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 an effective piece of software. And then we're going to move into concepts and, and savings that you can get for, and generate from having measured power data and having the ability to collect that data over time. And then we're going to finish up with a section on savings that you can get from actually having a single data repository or what we would refer to as the trusted DSIM database. And I hope you'll stay with us all the way through. Uh, things do get a little bit more interesting as, as we progress. So if we look, we're going to just kind of go over some of the terminology that you hear a lot about with DSIM systems and, and kind of what this means so we're all kind of on the same page. So when we talk about capacity management, we're referring to space, power, cooling, uh, your power chain distribution and diversity of the, ch of the chain, and then also your network path. And Again, at, the, at this high level, we're also looking at asset management, and that would include all data center physical resources and, and logical connections between them. Also, you might track things like maintenance and lease information on your assets, and, and get into more of a concept of an entire asset life cycle. So we're not just looking at you know, a, get a, a set in time. We're actually looking at from the time you actually generate a purchase order through de decommissioning a device and having an audit log of that. We'll also look at change management from the aspect of you know, flow through from a, a change ticket system, also workflow, how email notifications work in with that, 
And then visualization, the, the, the main piece that a lot of people want from DSIM systems, which centers around the dashboard, your floor plans, and your, and your rack elevations. So again, moving on to data collection, that might be your plug-in architecture supporting you know, SNMP, uh, data that you can get like amps, volts, power factor, watts, kilowatt hours, temperature, humidity, and we're looking for scalability. We're looking for high scalability. Um, information that you can get from DSIMS uh, systems, whether it be the dashboard, uh, chargeback reports, your capacity forecast, or maybe a gauge that you use for capacity, and then also thermal analysis. And then when we talk about controls, we're talking about the ability to cycle, for example, power outlets, uh, potentially do agentless graceful uh, shutdown, or, or you can even advance set power sequence for uh, when power is restored or delay. Um, and then on the management side, we're looking at firmware and configuration and managing that uh, outlet and sensor label naming, and then of course event notification. So the, the first section that we look at, and again, you know, I'm targeting specific areas that we look for for savings with, with DSIM, is to safely increase the set point within the data center. So there's a lot of common methods out there that, that data center managers use to save energy. Um, I'm sure you know everybody's done things with blanking panels, uh, bypass airflow, uh, things that you can do with the, the raised floor with like garments. Um, we saw obviously the big trend to move to vir virtualization, which was uh, very successful in, in, in cost savings in the data center. And now we're also currently seeing people interested in savings from delivering high power to the rack. We're seeing people deliver 400 volts directly to the rack. Um, some things that you can use DSIM systems for is, de is decommissioning servers, uh, identifying ghost servers in the data center from power data. Another thing that we're seeing, um, and, and this is um, not so new, but it's, it's taking on some, some new angles, is to build back to, to drive behavior. Um, when we first did a lot of this, we talked to, you know, we, we were talking to uh, the the uh, concept of being able to build back or, or, or match up with what the colo provider might be providing you or vice versa. But we've actually seen customers using build back internally to a department. You know, say a cluster of Oracle servers gets dropped into the data center um, and they want to build back to the people running the Pe PeopleSoft application. And we've even seen a specific customer actually do it at the individual user level because the individual users are identified to the systems, and then they can they can trend the data off of those systems and actually build back at the individual user level to drive behavior. And that we've seen actually a customer in a lab environment, um, you know, do that type of scenario. So if we we look at our our friends at Gardner, um, basically saying that you can save four percent in energy costs for each degree of upward change to the baseline temperature known as your, as your set point. Um, and you can't answer me right now, but you know, how many of you have thought about energy consumed by cooling air movement? Not just cooling air, but actually just moving that air through the data center. And we move to a, an example uh, energy usage in the data center. And many of us from consultants, vendors, to end users, we're trying to learn more about and, and characterize energy usage in the data center to figure out opportunities to improve efficiency. Uh, studies from groups like EYP, EPA, uh, and Lawrence Berkeley National Lab tell us that IT equipment gets anywhere from around 50% of the power flowing into the data center, while the data center infrastructure itself can consume another 50%. And the exact energy consumption profile varies by location, but cooling air movement and typical significant consumption categories in this case, represent about 37% of total consumption. So we obviously built a model, um, and this is good food for thought, uh, is, is looking at in a, a typical environment, and obviously I use round numbers here. Um, you know, I used 1,000 racks and for this simple model, um, and obviously you know, your situation can be quite different. Um, some other factors in here, it, it, the kilowatt hours, your cost can be quite different, but we see everything from five cents to, to 30 cents a kilowatt hour, and that depends on where you are in the country, your location, and it might depend on, on, the, uh, on the deal that you actually have with your, your power utility company. So there's a, there's a lot of variance there. So we look at 1,000 racks, we, we put in an average of five kW per rack. 
uh, multiply that out to our IT power, our data center, again, nice, uh, nice round numbers, data center power, KW, 10,000. And then taking our, from our previous page, the 37%, the again, nice round numbers, 3,700. We multiply that by the number of hours in a year, and then we get to the point of our, our actual kilowatt hours for moving air, moving air throughout the data center. Multiply that by our kilowatt hours, 15 cents, and we come up with a pretty staggering number uh, for, for cooling air movement. Now, if we marry that with the 4% the savings for each degree that we can raise our set point, that comes out to $195,000 annual savings per degree that you raise your set point. Now, again, that's a staggering number, but if we, if we look at this in a, in a linear fashion and scale it down to 100 racks, that's still $19,500, and that's still a pretty significant number based on just, just collecting that data with tools that you actually might already have in place. And again, this, this can be you. Um, you know, once again, we're backing up our 4% argument. Uh, Mark Monroe, uh, Director of Sustainable Computing at Sun Microsystems. Uh, and there really is no reason why people can't take advantage of this concept uh, and being able to raise set point within the data center. So we look at it in a new way. Uh, the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers, they've actually changed uh, the, the, the actual levels. So not only do you have a 4% per degree savings opportunity, the number of degrees that you have to work with has actually increased quite a bit. And we use the ASHRAE standards. This is a, uh, a, a chart from the, from the ASHRAE organization. The new recommended uh, standard is 65 to 80 degrees. Uh, the old recommended was 68 to 77. I hope you can clearly see the chart there. Um, and that, what we call kind of the allowable was approximately 60 to 90. And if you're in the telco industry, the NEBS uh, compliance is, is the 65 to 80. And you also got to keep in mind that this refers to the actual air entering the IT equipment. So this is going to be on the inlet side or the air coming into the IT gear. So we look at where to measure power, and again, you know, relying on, on ASHRAE standards. Uh, this is from thermal guidelines for data processing environments. Uh, we want to basically in a standard rack measure at the top, middle, bottom on the, on the inlet side. We do have, obviously there's customers that, that um, monitor the air coming out of the back of the rack, but for these purposes we don't really need to do that. Um, Raritan, we just recommend we have a simple, uh, we call it a T3H1. It's a simple sensor. It connects via an RJ11 uh, connection uh, to, uh, to our rack PDUs, or we also have uh, environmental units. It's very inexpensive. You know, a sensor is going to cost you just a little bit over $100. Um, and so we get more into the, the methods to measure and, and monitor the environment. Now, um, again, these are all tools you actually might have some of this in place already. Um, you know, we look, you see a picture there, the APC NetBots. Um, there, there's quite a few of those out in the, in the field. You know, they range in cost from one to $3,000. You can hang probes off of it, uh, ranging from, you know, four to, to over 60. Um, you know, the only downside is, you know, pro it requires provisioning, um, and, and you have to manage um, in, an, an extra IP drop just for that specific appliance. Uh, we also have the, the ballometer, which is about a $3,000 expense, but you need to run around from tile to tile and take a measurement at one point in time versus over time, and it's, and it's not as much as an issue for fixed speed fans, but you know, what if the site is variable speed fans? So the other, the other things that we can look at is, is you know, to safely increase set point is the computational fluid dynamic study or the software, um, but again, that can be upwards of tens, of, of tens to hundreds to thousands of dollars for the license. Uh, lots of training involved potentially. Um, another way to do that is actually use consultants who will come in and, and do the CFD services for you. Uh, again, the price depends on size or you know room and uh, room length of engagement. Um, but it does give you excellent characterization. Uh, but it's based again on nameplate data and and that snapshot in time. And obviously, we know these things are all improving. So that gives me the opportunity to put in my uh, Raritan commercial for uh, Raritan hardware. Um, yeah, obviously, another way to do this is through the Intelligent Rack PDU uh, with environmental sensor support. So again, we're, we're looking to leverage the IP drop 
Um, you know, a lot of our customers over the past have said, you know, I don't want to, you know, put intelligent PDUs in because, you know, the, the cost of all these network drops. But, uh, you know, listening to our customers, uh, we're now at the point where we can run four PDUs off of one drop. And if that's still an issue for you, there's obviously the option to run wireless off of this. So you can actually have the PDU in the rack running the temperature and humidity probes. You can actually string out up to 16 off of, off of one PDU. And that's going to allow you to do monitoring, polling, trending. Um, also, it'll be the ability to generate alerts uh, if you go over a certain threshold that, that you, you preset. Um, and you can even take action based on, a, on an, an alert threshold to actually shut off a breaker if you want if you go over a, a certain threshold. There's quite a bit of possibility with what you can do with, with this type of equipment. So if we look in, in summary of, of, of this, we're, we're talking about 4% per degree in upward change. Uh, the solution being a cooling chart and event monitoring. And, and pictured to the right is some screenshots of our uh, Power IQ software. Um, and that actually incorporates the ASHRAE chart right into the DSIM software. And each dot on the chart represents a data center probe. And it doesn't have to be a Raritan probe. It, it just has to be a probe that we can talk to via SNMP. But that, that, that probe will show up on the, on the chart. You can drill down to it um, and, and actually see you know, anything that is outside of the ASHRAE range. You can also set up your own custom range and again, have a, a, a quick and easy way to be confident that you're within the guidelines. Um, you know, many people do have monitoring probes available. Um, I just recently met with a very large customer of ours who has the capability, but they actually never uh, connected the network drops to their IPDUs. Um, you know, a lot of people have the technology in their data center. It's just a matter of, you know, getting it configured and, and getting it connected. Um, we've actually made it very easy. Um, you know, for, for new installs, the uh, the rack PDUs, you can actually do configurations, push the settings out. We can flash settings to uh, via USB stick to the to the again to the PDUs, and that saves in deployment time, which has been one of the big reasons why people haven't deployed fully a lot of this technology. So again, getting back to some of the recommendations, you know, instrument the data center so that you can basically measure the temperature at the points where it counts most. And, and again, that's for this purpose, it's going to be at the inlet. Uh, you want to monitor for threshold alarms so you're informed and you can react before an incident occurs. And again, you want to monitor and look at it over time. You want to see the big picture and so that you can prevent future issues. And I, and I kind of you know, like to look at it as uh, you know, so you can sleep at night and prevent golden arches syndrome, which is a you know short for career advancement to flipping burgers at McDonald's, is you know being able to have those threshold alerts and being able to not be notified via via your smartphone or you know, for those who still use pagers that type of thing, and then having the trending and forecasting charts to look at it over long term and then look at your capacity over long term. Now as we move into our next section, uh, we're going to talk about measured power data. Now this is not as easy to model, um, you know, because there's a lot of different avenues. Uh, but the savings, depending on your unique uh, situation, can actually be much more dramatic than what we've already looked at. So when we look at the DSIM system, we're looking at sound engineering principles. Okay, uh, we're actually going to lay out and build your power circuits throughout the entire power chain. Um, the system is actually going to look for and compute capacity, but it's not going to just look at it at that particular level. It's going to check the entire power chain. Uh, the the DSIM tool is also going to verify your connection types, um, and you can even you know do things like cord length and document um, you know even the, the color of the cord. But again, once we have that power chain documented and and, and input into the tool correctly. This gives us an integrated chain, and it, and it gives us a built-in tool for better decision making. It gives us better accuracy, safety. Uh, the list, list basically goes on and on. So this screen represents an item on the power chain, and, and, and in this case, it's actually selected on the left there. It's a competitor's rack PDU. And it doesn't matter you know, what part of the chain that you select. We're still going to look at the nameplate rating, the budgeted power rating, and, and if you have Raritan Power IQ or integration with another monitoring tool, we can actually see a measured value, which again helps dramatically with your decision process. So the great thing that trended measured data is 
Now you can identify averages, and more importantly, you can actually see what your peak loads are over time. Um, so most data center managers right now are looking at nameplate data, um, and it's almost like throwing a dart at a dartboard. So you know, many customers are over-provisioned, um, but they don't have any way to safely plan capacity. Well, they might have you know, ways with homegrown tools, but it becomes very, very cumbersome and time-consuming to do this until now. So we talk about the incredible opportunity with measured power, um, you know, and, and just you know, not one size fits all, uh, unique circumstances for each customer situation, but it does give you tools to use. Uh, it, it just simply gives you areas for investigation. So I can, sit, I can actually look in, at my data center and go, am I over provisioned? Do I need that new crack unit? Do I need the new expansion? Do I need more or new colo space? Do I need a new data center? I mean, that, that's a, a very large expense. Can I be more efficient with what I have now? And now, if I think about those questions, then I ask myself about the value of a DSIM software. So now we're going to move into our, our third and, and last section uh, around operational savings with, with, with DSIM tools. And as we go through this last section, this is not as dramatic, maybe, uh, it's not as sexy, uh, but this is really the core value that we've seen derived from data center infrastructure management software. So if we look at an enterprise data center, um, does this remind you of your organization? Um, you know, there's different groups controlling different domains. Uh, they're utilizing different tools. And everything is siloed off. Uh, you might be using SiteScan, Forsear. Uh, some customers are using Raritan on the facility side. On the network side, again, you know, different tools for configuration like Cisco Works, monitoring, HP OpenView, IBM. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of tools out on the market. On the system side, you know, the big part being asset tracking. And, and most of our customers are actually coming from spreadsheets and, and homegrown databases. Uh, again, the, the, the change control systems and then the monitoring systems. And what we've seen is you know, data center managers, people working in the data center trying to evolve and bring these domains and systems together. And that's really what's been driving the DSIM market, is the ability to share information. But the, the, the problem still is, is having to go up and over each silo every time you're trying to look to make a change in the data center or to find that information that you need for a specific system in the data center. So we look at the model evolving with DSIM systems, uh, we're, we're sh seeing a movement towards a shared common repository for data center operations. And again, we're, we're doing this across silos, uh, multiple silos, and making things a lot easier for operations on a daily basis. So if we look at the, the Raritan DSIM trusted source database model, um, this is really the core model, core concept of, of the Raritan DSIM solution. Um, everything's based off of a common database. Uh, Raritan uses a uh, standard Postgres SQL database. And the first step really, um, or as other re others refer to as is, is the first level of maturity, is just getting off of spreadsheets and just getting your assets into the data sim, DSIM database. Um, most customers that we work with, um, just getting there is, 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 is getting over a major hump. Um, from there, generally we see our customers get into building out all the power connections. It's obviously, in a, in a greenfield situation, you would build your power connections first and then add your, uh, add your IT devices. But the, you know, greenfield is, is, uh, is, is not, uh, it, it's overly rare. Um, and then we also see customers finally getting into the, the last step, which is connectivity management. And this enables your capacity management reporting, your change management. Um, we've had quite a bit of customers talk about the need and demand for integration with uh, change control or CMDB systems. So we incorporated the bi-directional web services APIs. Um, but it's actually kind of surprising. Uh, we talk about you know, DSIM maturity again, how few customers are actually get really getting to that level. It's just getting to that first level of getting the assets into the database. Um, we actually went through a, an, a long process with our customers. And we went through an interview process. We actually talked to a very large number of our, our, our customer database to better understand the value and, and how they were actually using the tools. 
Um, and what we found was it was overwhelming. Uh, the value is really at the operational level, the efficiency at the operational level of just having that shared common database. So there was a uh, white paper as part of the, um, the invitation for today's seminar. Uh, it was a little bit about the University of Florida and, and Shands Healthcare. Um, and it kind of outlines that concept. Um, their, their savings came from the accuracy with their asset records. Um, their savings came from efficiencies that they gained in the move and in change process within the data center. The, the, the other parts of it were secondary to that. There, obviously, there were uh, you know, big savings there as well, but the main, again, being the moves and changes. And the project driver, again, you know, DSIM is a maturing technology, emerging market. Uh, it was just a proactive data center manager. Um, you know, he started the, the, the search. Uh, he got thwarted by upper level management and then he circled back and finally got a, his project through. Um, and previous to that, he had been using spreadsheets and Visio. Um, and, and then, you know, facility side, also using CAD, uh, AutoCAD. So again, this, this case study, the details on it are, are available through, um, through the Graybar website. You can download it and review it in detail. But using uh, the work that we did with that organization, we, we came up with another ROI model. Uh, so the, the, the case around moves, adds, changes. So we look at automating the manual processes, reducing provisioning cycle, uh, reduce the number of hands involved in the, in the transaction of actually, say, provisioning a server, uh, and increasing the accuracy. So we look at, a, again, using round numbers, we look at a data center size of 100 cabinets, uh, we estimated the average weekly change of, of three changes, and then a, a $100 per hour loaded cost for your for your man hours. Okay, so how does that all add up? So the actual change request itself, there's really no savings there, but things get a little bit more dramatic. So if we look at server configuration definition, so you actually have a model library within the DSIM tool that has Every major manufacturer's uh, IT devices within it, their, the ports, the uh, power supply, the you know every every conceivable asset of it, even down to the weight, RU, everything that's in there, and it can also be customized to devices that you use over and over again. So there's a big savings on just defining the IT equipment that you're 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 putting into the data center, and then the intelligent search and place piece, which looks Actually, it takes that device from your, your library and says, okay, where do I have rack space? Where do I have the needed power? And the important part is it's not just the power available at the rack PDU. It's the power available because it looks at the entire power chain when you, when, you, when you put that IT device up there and click on it and search. It's going to check the entire power chain. Where do I have network cabling? Where do I have any other cabling that I need? And then the, 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 the drops. Um, that is dramatic savings. Um, and then also the, the big area that we look at is the rework. Um, you know, and we'll ask the question, you know, how many times do you have to go and rework due to inaccurate documentation? Because you have to share data across the silos within your organization. So that is a big cost savings that we, we put into the model. Um, and then obviously times savings from project management and meetings. And we come up with you know, a savings of 3.57 hours, which is actually, in this model, 52%. Now, if you don't agree 100% with my model, uh, we do have that exact, actually, um, we do have that exact calculator online. If you go to our website, we have an online ROI calculator. And you can jump in there and play around with, with those different numbers. So again, using the 100, 100 rack example, we look at the list price of our DC track software, 100 cabinet license, list price 56,640. And then we put in, you know, just to be, you know, inflate things, uh, a basic implementation service. We have a quick start implementation service. So our total cash flow of the investment on day, on day zero or day one is 64,940. And then we look at the operational savings as our income from the end of year one, year two, year three. Um, and how did I get to that 56,000 or 55,692? That came from the previous ROI example, which was the 3.57 hours saved times three changes per week times 52 weeks. 
times our, our loaded man uh, hour rate. Again, these are all numbers that you can play around with yourself. Um, and depending, you know, how your organization looks at these projects, um, you know, we can look at the cash flow, uh, the payback period. Uh, in this example, is one year, a little over two months. Or if you rate projects, we can actually look at the net present value of the DSIM project or, or cumulative savings. Um, you know, these savings, you know, th this looks pretty good. And this is just the operational part. Now, imagine if we go back to some of the other things that we talked about previously. Imagine if we add in the set point increase. Remember the 19,500 on 100, 100 racks? What does that do to our, our, our ROI? And what does that do to our project? And how about if we have a major savings from measured power? What happens if I save from having to add colo space? I save from having to actually build a new data center. What does that do for the ROI of the investment into the, the DSIM project? So again, as I mentioned, the ROI tool is out on the uh, Raritan website. You, you're free to play around with that. And as usual, we'll be happy to work with you and your Graybar representative to develop a, a realistic plan for DSIM success. Um, and at the same time, we'll also work with you to assist in developing and, and targeting, you know, what savings goals are you going after with this DSIM project? Thank you very much, Mike. That was a great presentation. And we want to take your questions now um, as we're waiting for you guys to, uh, 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 folks to put your questions in the, uh, into the uh, into the tool so we can see them on our end. Uh, I have one question for Mike, and uh, also I wanted to mention that online with Mike right now is uh, Scott Sandal, and he's a dedicated customer success manager at Raritan. You could think of him as the super SE. He runs very large projects around the country. So the first question I'm going to ask you, Mike, is this whole thing about jumping into DCIM. There tends, tends to be this fear about jumping into DCIM now, now um, customers are afraid that they get locked in on one system and the technology continues to change and they won't be able to, to move. They're kind of locked in. And I was wondering if you could address that a little bit. Yeah. Could we start right now? Yeah, I mean, obviously, and they kind of alluded to this, the, the big hurdle that people have is, is just getting their assets into the database. Um, you know, we, we actually uh, try and assist with that as much as possible. Um, but keep in mind that the, the database itself is an industry standard Postgres SQL database. So that makes our data portable. So if you do uh, go through the, uh, the initial steps of getting your assets, building you know, your connectivity information, and getting that all into your database, that data is actually portable if you, if you really want to get down to it. All right, great. And then one more question I would like to ask uh, Mike is that the uh, Raritan temperature portion of DCIM temperature monitoring, you mentioned these probes, and there could be three probes, top, middle, bottom, so many probes per PDU, et cetera. How, how are these purchased? Are they purchased in kits or packages? What kind of software is associated with the temperature component? Can you, can you dig in a little bit more about temperature monitoring? Yeah, so um, the, the temperature monitor that I, that I described is you know, using tools that you might already have, but Raritan offers uh, probes in different sizes, lengths, um, and number of probes. So the, the standard one that we use most often is we call T3H1, and that actually has three temperature and one humidity probe off of an, a single RJ11 connection, and we connect that into the intelligent PDU. Um, we can actually uh, splice up to four of those off of one PDU, so off of one IP. Or we have uh, little what we call EMX environmental monitoring units that you can run, uh, you know, 24 probes of you know three each. I mean, there, there's a lot of different ways to skin that cat. All right. Um, there is a question that several people have asked. Robert just happens to be the one that's up here right now. Wants to know if the presentation will be available. I want to let everybody know that this presentation is archived. It's on graybar.com. If you'll go up there and look at the G2 talk. Uh, webinar logo and you click on it, you can get to the archive. So all of our seminars are archived there. So this data that you got from Mike uh, is, and the charts and that kind of stuff is there along with the white paper, et cetera. Another question came in from Marcus and he's wanting to know about, about getting these assets put into the system. And I had the same question, you know, how much front end time is there to get 
all of this data from these disparate spreadsheets and databases and get it put into a DCIM system, and are there resources there that can help right, us do that? Right. So that, that is one of the big challenges, and again, that's one of the reasons uh, a lot of customers um, you know, have, have, have not jumped headlong in. Um, it's a combination, and it's a, and it's a process, um, and Martin knows this well. Um, there's, there's a uh, process of SNMP discovery, um, which in larger organizations gets, gets more challenging. Um, and then marrying that data with what you already have in, in spreadsheets. Uh, some customers are doing a two-step process. We, we look at using uh, barcode scanners, scanning data into a flat file, and then importing it. Um, and then as we go and as the technology emerges, uh, we're, we're looking to do more and more with automation around that. But it, it's a multi-step process, um, and, it, and it gets more and more complex as you as you get larger and larger, larger as an organization. Okay. Uh, several people have asked if there's Bixie credits for this presentation, and unfortunately there's not. Uh, we set our SLA to make sure that this is uh, presentations at 30 minutes. We don't want to do death by PowerPoint, uh, but there are no Bixie credits associated with this presentation. There are other presentations that uh, Graybar does in the, in the G2 Talk webinar series that earn some Bixie credits. Uh, there is one more question up here at Marcus. Uh, what was that, Mike? Uh, that, I'll answer that. So yeah. the, how is the data from the probes fed into the system? Yeah, how does that work? So we, we integrate, we have the, the smaller monitoring tool, which is called PowerIQ. PowerIQ integrates right off the shelf with, with DC Track. And PowerIQ actually is the monitoring tool that grabs the information from the temperature and humidity probes, and then we feed that into the DC Track software. Okay. Are there, if there's any other questions, I encourage you to go ahead then enter them online. We have a few more minutes left until we hit our 40-minute deadline. While we're waiting to see if there's uh, another question, uh, could you describe what the software platforms are? What are their names again? It's, it's, yeah. it's Power IQ, DC Track. What's the difference between that? What are we talking about? Okay, here? so um, Raritan has, has two products, um, and we've chosen to have two products because you can have either product or you can have both products working in, in uh, integrated mode, depending on your unique situation. So we have Power IQ, and Power IQ is the, 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 the solution where the, uh, we showed the screenshots of the ash rate chart, uh, the, um, the actual uh, event log. Uh, it is a monitoring tool. It's going to monitor and gather information from your data center. It's going to gather your, uh, the data from your rack PDUs. It's going to look at your panels if they're, if they're uh, enabled for communication. And it's also going to store and trend that data. Now, DC Track is more of your uh, proactive capacity planning uh, and actually change control database. So what we, we do is we actually marry to the two together and they share the common items in a single database. All right. Mike, uh, it's been a great presentation. I don't see any more questions up here. If there are some that have been uh, typed in and we didn't get to them, uh, we will respond to your questions via email. They've all been documented. Again, I wanted to remind you about the archive, everybody. And we wanted to let you know if you're online and you're the first 50 to watch the presentation or be with us today, you're going to get a certificate for a cup of coffee. It's been a great pleasure to spend the morning with you here, Mike. Uh, Scott, I know you're out there online. I hope this was helpful to you, too. Uh, anybody that's looking to enter, uh, get into a DCIM solution can contact Graybar, and we can unleash the resources of Scott uh, to help with that as well. So hope everybody has a wonderful day. We look for you for our next uh uh, webinar series. Oh, one more thing. We're going to be out at Data Center World in Las Vegas, so if you're going to be there, I encourage you to stop by and see Graybar or Raritan uh, at Data Center World in Las Vegas next month. So we look forward to seeing you. Have a great day. Thanks for being online with us today.